Megan Gilroy joins us now for another edition of Health and Wellness. Welcome, Megan. Thank you, John. On Health and Wellness, we interview experts who help us discover how we can lead a happier, more balanced life. And many of us aspire to not only improve our lives and enjoy our lives, but also to take care of the earth, particularly our gardens. So Margie Flint, our town's practicing herbalist, gives us some how-to tips for our gardens, as well as telling the tale of transformation of her own garden. Margie teaches all around the country at herbal conferences, as well as seeing clients in her own home that, of course, has a beautiful practicing herbal garden. Let's take a look. So today, I want to hear a little bit about your garden. I know when I've stepped into your garden, it's like entering this magical world. So give us a little tour since we couldn't be out there due to the rain today. Do you want the past history of the garden? Sure, let's start there. there. We'll begin the tour with what was. Um, this was originally a house that had big oil trucks on it and mm. a huge barn, and it was the neighborhood dump. And when I moved here 30 some odd years ago, I rototilled and all the soil blew away as dust and there was not a single worm on the property. Wow. And now it is a secret garden. It is behind the gates is a utopia of beautiful trees and plants and, and incredible herbs. And it took loads and loads of compost. I used to walk down to Fruit of the Four Seasons and get all their clippings of the day yep. and bring them back and compost them. and you know, had topsoil brought in and seaweed from the ocean and just kept building and building the soil until what is there has manifest. Wow, that's inspiring to know that you can make that much transformation because it really is so lush and beautiful. So what's in your garden besides plants? Besides plants, you mean tree-wise? Trees. And oh, the, well, we have a big fire pit. Mm -hmm. Um, a large gravel area and a small copper pit that um, we have uh, gatherings of people who just want to talk about the planet and positive things and uh, circling around that are beautiful trees. There's ginkgo and hawthorn and linden. Mm. All the medicinal trees stand around us. Mm -hmm. And then I have hops, a hops arbor and um, the hops are behind me. This was what we gathered uh, last week, the two days of sun we had. Right. <laughs> and then we put them above the windows because it creates a relaxing atmosphere in the home. You know, people always come in here and say, I don't know why I feel so relaxed in mm. your house. And it's because the hops is a sedative plant and okay. it just mellows you out. So that's why hops also appears in beer. In beer, right. yes. That's why we all drink beer at the end of the day, right. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A more medicinal use maybe of of the hops. So what, what other herbs, do you, you harvest all of the herbs you use in your practice from your garden or do you no, get them from I other places? No, I hire professionals. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I harvest some from my garden, but um, I prefer to get my herbs from places a little more out in the country. Yep. Um, because, you know, close areas like this have a lot of pollution. Yep. So, I mean, my garden is unique in that it really does, the air is very transformed and I have bees, so, um, you know, the the atmosphere within this space is pretty well. I would prefer to get my herbs from more country-like settings. Mm -hmm. And drying herbs on the seacoast is a challenge. Right. You know, the fog rolls in, boom, your herbs that you've harvested are damp and right. ruined. So yeah. uh, it's important to have really conscious wild-crafted herbs for your practice. And I only use the most highest quality, mm -hmm. consciously wild-crafted, if wild-crafted, or consciously cultivated plants. Mm -hmm. And so if people at home were interested in cultivating their garden to be a little more beautiful, do you have a recommendation for them? Uh, use seaweed. We live on the coast. Hmm. Gather seaweed, dry it, crunch it up into powder, and spread it around your garden, and that adds back all the minerals that have just watch, washed out to the sea. Right. Plus we have, you know, fish head uh, emuls, um, liquid that you can use on your garden and using compost, you know, your daily clippings. It's amazing how quickly soil will be built if you use your own compost from making your meals. Right. It's pretty Great way simple. to reuse and give yeah. back to the planet. 
yeah, we, we need to do that. Mm -hmm. And for people in their own gardens, you know, if you have um, depression or anxiety or uh, digestive issues, you can grow the plants you need in your own right. garden. Every, every mother and grandmother had their own garden and, that they walked out to and treated their family with. Right. It was very rare that you ever went to the doctor, you know, so. It's great to have it's that. It's nice to your, empower yourself. Yeah, your own yeah. resource. <laughs> well, thank you for speaking with me. You're welcome. I love your garden. And if you would like to see Margie's garden during a visit to her as a herbalist, you can contact her through her website. And next time we'll be talking to Margie about her book, The Practicing Herbalist. And until then, be healthy and be well.